All right, here today I'm with my friend Paul, and this is actually an apology video because I do want to apologize for knowing someone who does play League of Legends. Used to. Used to. I'm I'm clean. I haven't played I haven't played a game of League of Legends in a few years. I, well, I do like very closely follow the esports end of it, so it, it's still a problem, just a different problem. All right, let's all congratulate Paul on his sobriety and becoming a slightly better person. <laughs> But, but, he did get me onto Arcane, so we are here today to talk about Arcane and how it connects to League of Legends. Do you find that it is a good basis for a show, or is it something where the creators of Arcane were just taking something strange so, and making it beautiful? Like, the game itself doesn't touch on the lore that much. It's really just like a top-down MOBA, you know, your team wants to destroy the other team's base and, you know, win the game. The, the backstory to everybody doesn't really take place in the game, aside from, like, voice lines. And plus, Riot's, like, rewritten the lore partially or fully probably about, like, three or four times at this point since the game came out in, like, the late thousands. Like, literally, like, like, 09, I think. So the fact that they were basically working with, like, a blank template where they could, you know, really do whatever they want, with nothing set in stone, they can, you know, have free reign and really could do what they wanted, sticking in, like, the, the vague guidelines that couldn't change. Did fan interpretation influence the canon in Arcane, do you think? I don't think so. I feel like it's one of those things where, like, they were waiting for something big, because Jinx has been, like, one of the most marketable characters. Like, when she released, she had her own theme song. Oh, wow. When she's, like, working in the workshop. I know, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that song that's playing when Silco's trying to yell over it, that's her theme song. curious if you think there was like a reason that they selected the characters they did like you obviously said jinx was a fan favorite yeah. but are the other characters like jace like he's just a little pretty boy yeah so i mean at least like a lot of these characters um they've been like very popular characters like to play either because like pro players pulled off crazy stuff with them or they've just been like around for a while that they've people enjoy them and i think also they're the easiest character like piltover zon is probably the is the easiest way to like introduce somebody into the world because it sets up, you know, Piltover, like, steampunk future city of tomorrow. And then Zon, you've got, like, this, like, underground, like, chempunk. So you have, like, the, like, the class dichotomy, mirrored cities. But without doing something, like, some of the other regions, like, it's, things become, like, much more, like, fantastical. Piltover is an easy way to introduce characters. You can touch on, like, magic of the world with, um, you know, Hex. It gives you, like, the origins of Hextech, which is referenced in the game a whole bunch. Um, they touch on, like, the Rune Wars, which is, like, the OG lore of League of Legends, like, why all these random characters fight because you know the rune wars happen and this is how they settle conflict but that's that got scrapped in like 2012 but like the rune war sticks around arcane is probably going to not always be about piltover and zon and noxus is probably going to be involved because one they're establishing it here but also you can they can do noxus versus demacia noxus is you know like dark gothic you know might makes right and then demacia is a like noble bright better than thou type like empire and then there's also, they could touch on the Noxus Ionia War, now that they get, like, because they have an entry point, like, through Noxus. And then that's a whole bunch of new characters that they can, you know, yeah. you know throw lore around with. I can't fathom of, because isn't it like a bird's eye view game? What are those called? Yeah, it, it's top down, so it's a, a MOBA. So, like, massive online base attack, I think the acronym is. It's lost all meaning. There's no way that original MOBA was this entrenched in political storyline. Oh, absolutely not. They, they definitely, ex like, I mean... You learn about, like, the politics of the world through, like, when Riot re releases new characters, you know, they, they all get, like, established lore, and they'll, like, do some, like, short stories about them. When Riot's trying to, like, move the world forward, you learn more about, like, what's going on with, like, the different the different countries or factions, empires, whatever. So, like, you do get, and this is the first time that they've, like, really gotten down to, like, some, like, nitty-gritty type stuff. Do you think they'll introduce more that will hit towards the video game in Season 2, or, like, add more... Two champions are going to be, like, confirmed new in the show for Season 2. One is Janna, who's not referenced at all it, not referenced at all in Season 2. I think it's just, like, sort of pseudo-leaked, pseudo, pseudo, like, somebody asked a Riot person, and they said, yeah, she's going to be referenced. Janna, who's, I forget her, like, lore currently, but she's, like, sort of, like, a wind goddess and, like, a patron, you know, deity in Zon for some reason. And then Singed, who's, like, the Dr. Victor goes to, because Singed is also a champion in the game. And they, you see, like, a, a furry arm of, like, a, it's for, like, a few frames. And that, that's Warwick, who's, like, one of the original champions released. So he's going to be he's gonna be in Season 2. There's rumors going around, like, since, since that scene that Warwick is Vander. Which would be really, really cool. That would that's be what they so do. cool. He had, like, three moments where it's like, oh, this guy's dead. And he's and a he buff fine. guy. Buff guys are Yo, Vander, Vander built different. Oh, he is so buff. Goddamn. 
And then I also wanted to ask, just because you had mentioned earlier, like that there's like a socioeconomic inequality thing between Piltover and I forget Zon. Zon, right? You so, only see the name a couple times because like this, it is technically right now it's like the undercity of Piltover, but a couple times they mentioned like the nation of Zon, and in like current league lore, Zon is its own. Oh, entity. so this is more of like a backstory then. Oh yeah, it's all it's all backstory to, to like the characters. Oh. Like this is arcane is taking taking place pre current lore. It's not moving the world forward. It's it's establishing lore in the world. Were you surprised then that they were doing so much with like the politics and the socioeconomic disparity, or were you expecting I, that? I I think it, it adds to the story really well. Instead of because if they weren't doing the politics, then it'd all just be like action, action, fighty, fighty. Mm -hmm. And the the fight scene animation is not the choreography is incredible. The animation, the whole show is great. But if it was just action, action, fighty, fighty. I don't think people would care about it as much. It's tougher to get invested in the world when it's just like right slapping action figures together. Yeah. I like that they kept it to, like, they stuck with, like, mature, it still stayed, like, you know, TV-14, but they had, like, they kept, like, enough of the mature themes to make it feel like a real world. Like, it didn't feel like a show based off of, like, a video game. You know, anything, anything you knew about League was something I drunkenly explained to you yes, that one time. that was all my knowledge. Well, like, is it, but even, like, without any knowledge of League, it stands so well on its own. And I think without, like, the political intrigue, like, the darker themes, like, the delving into the, the complex character relations, like, there's so many complex characters. And I think that really lets you get immersed in the show. And I think it's really big for it. Going into the second part, we want to talk about episodes one through three, because obviously it's broken up. I, right. I watched it all in one go after you told me to, but you had been watching it as it was coming out. Yeah. So Those ways were excruciating. I can imagine, because they are good at the cliffhangers. Yeah, oh my god. They, they, really, they knew what they were doing. Oh yeah. But from the start... I think the first thing most people noticed was the animation. Oh god, it's so it took them like the show got delayed because like it, like they like did like the first animation tests and they were just like this isn't up to our standards so we're gonna like go back to the drawing board which got people like real nervous like oh god is this actually gonna happen or or is it like getting lost to budget cuts but it was so worth the extra wait because like yeah. it's like just it's like just stylized enough where like it's it's it's, it's you know modern animation is always gonna be like it's always gonna be computer generated but it's also at least like pseudo hand drawn. Yeah. And, but also, it helps, like, a lot of the characters, like, they look very much like they should compared to, like, like the, the splash arts and, like, game art, but without looking exactly the same, which I think, again, helps Arcane be on its own. It also gets away from, like, sometimes League has, like, weird design choices. Actually, because you had mentioned that it's computer generated, I did a video on CGI a while back, and they said that right. it is computer generated, but it was, like, also, like, the computer generated based off of hand drawings, which is not the common way to go about it. No. Same thing with the Spider-Verse. I was about to, I was to say, say the same thing. It's, ooh. <laughs> and then that leads into the soundtrack. Well, while I was writing up my notes on this, I like I had the soundtrack going, and it bangs. It's so good. Riot handling like Imagine Dragon, like giving them a blank check because this, this is the second time Imagine Dragons has showed up for League. The first time was the first worlds. The first time like the World Storm had a theme song. It was Warriors by Imagine Dragons. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they Riot funded that. The show. Yeah. Now, now Imagine Dragons is is canon in League of Legends. Wait, that's actually such a fun fact. I love it. It's 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 really neat because like they like part of the reason Imagine Dragons got picked up for the first World Song was because they were like actual fans that like they played the game. But like honestly, some of the other songs like this is just going off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. I know like I like Playground, Misfit Toys. Ooh, those I are love. strong. I think my favorite is the the Denzel Curry track when they're like when it's like Echo and uh, Jinx on the bridge. Yes, that song is so good. It works so well with for the, the scene. Animation and everything. Where yeah, it's like going back and forth. That, like the speed of it's, I think, like a bit reduced as well, so it's like more choppy. A little bit, yeah, because it, it sticks with like the like the pocket watch clicking. Yeah, which you specifically said you would never tell me about that because it's probably going to be introduced later. Echo's going to get some new toys. And then going into setting, which I guess is like not too different from what we talked about in the first part, but from someone who has never played League, when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be about a ragtag group of kids like going around their little town doing little adventures. Mm -hmm. No, no, not not at all. They were saying the scene for something else. That's it. I, I remember, like when um, uh, Milo. I I keep calling them Milo and Thatcher, even though I know the big guy's not Thatcher. It's Clagger. We're gonna get you out. They're new. That's interesting. I wonder where these characters are gonna oh, go. Not in league. Uh, did, did, you, you, <laughs> watched, you also watched the end of episode three, right? Yeah, but I thought maybe that they just killed some characters. <laughs> no, I mean, right has said that like even like characters in League aren't safe in Arcane. We'll still so, go in Ar uh, League. 
No, the no. The closest he got was like after Arcane came out. So League also has like a like an auto battler game, and one of the games of like one of the uh, seasons of that, um, Silco was a character you could use. Ooh. So they they toss him in there, but no, he was never a never a champion in the game. That's fascinating. So then, were you expecting some of these characters to die when you didn't recognize them? I knew they were less safe than characters who were in the game. But, I mean, going in, I didn't know, like, if the, these great characters are going to have, like, longer arcs or if they're just there for the sake of, like, helping establish characters or, you know, being the villain. Which, obviously, you know, like, like Vander, Milo, and Clogger. Clagger? Clogger? Clagger. Clagger. <laughs> like, like, them, like, clearly they're just, like, backstory characters that serve their part, gives you, like, you know, these are their childhood relationships. And then, you know, we blow them off. <laughs> Yeah, that, but still, I really thought I thought Silco was gonna make it into season two. He is one of the best written characters in that show, I think. Yo, he's perfect because like the whole time, like his, he's one of the most complex villains mm-hmm. I've seen in a long time. Because like the longer the show goes on, he gets more evil yeah. and like things start to be like more unhinged and he's doing worse things. But he also becomes more relatable at the same time. Like you still yeah. dislike everything he does, but he feels like a he's not just like a cartoon like mustache twirly villain. He's he's menacing. He has depth you can he has personal conflicts yeah. see him like sitting at the statue of vander and he's like oh. i'm finally achieving like our dream but you know at what costs you know can i pay this price all the stuff where he wants like his own like he wants his own city and like he wants him to be free i understand that part really well because there is obviously this disparity and it's not fair to say oh you're doing all these bad things when the people up top are doing that and they didn't even have to right yeah, they're, they're just they're just rich assholes yeah um, Heimer, Heimerdinger, who I will refer to as the Donger, because I, I love Heimerdinger is one of my favorites. Why? He's because he's, he's such a, he's just a weird little guy. I hate him. You know, he's so goofy. And like in the show, he, I love because in the game he's like this ridiculous little guy who's just like throwing around machines and saying like really dumb signs one liners. <laughs> but in the show, he's like complex. You can see him like wanting to do the right thing, but he's essentially immortal so like time doesn't matter to him like it does to yeah. humans so he's like yeah we can afford to wait decades i'm gonna i'm gonna see it happen yeah and jason victor like you don't get it and like they and i feel like he starts to see that like at the end when like he's talking with echo at the the firelight base i really like that he got a cool part in the show not talking about the later parts but when he says it's not enough to give people what they need to survive you need to give them what they need to live mm. and heimerdinger was hit by that it's not enough to give people what they need to survive you have to give them what they need to live for the first three episodes, talking more to the specifics of it, for the first three episodes, they're still younger, so it's, like, pre-time skip, which yeah. I thought was a good cut. Yeah, the, the time skip was done really well, because, like, the, the whole time in between, you know, Vi's in jail, and it's just Jinx, like, growing into the character she is in episode four, so, like, we don't need that, we don't need that chunk of the story, but we really need those three episodes to, like, make us care more about the world, especially for people who didn't know League and didn't, like, know how to care or feel about the characters. That sets it up super well to establish, like, who's who, like what. yeah. Unfortunately, I did not know what the tone of the show would end up being. So I was like, I'm seeing really attached to like these apparently irrelevant people, Milo and Clagger. Oh, because there's there they even then for like for like you know characters that are killing off a third way through the show. Yeah, they were like they were well written. You know, you like learn things about their personalities. And even my rewatch, I felt bad when the rocks fell. You know, you feel bad for Powder. Yeah, exactly. It's like like it's, a lot of the parenting. I feel like you know he has like the one on ones with Vi, and then Vi kind of handles the kids. Yeah. You know, which I guess sort of makes sense for, like, how, like, Vander, like, exists in Zaun, where he can't, like, parent all... Like, he clearly cares about all four of them a lot. Vi, yeah, he definitely plays... Vi is, like, his, his go-to. It's, like, yeah. you know... Middle you, you're, These kids are your... If you're gonna hang out with them, you know, and take them around, they're your responsibility. You gotta, you know, make sure they're all right. And I think that really did set up really well, though, for then the comparison between Vi and Vander in the earlier episodes... Mm-hmm. And then Jinx and Silco later, which was right. so interesting. Yeah, that dynamic is like I go even the rewatch went back and forth. Like, is this like, is this like a creepy relationship or is it like just weird because like Silco is like an evil crime boss who cares about Jinx and it's definitely a bit of both. They have a weird dynamic, but it was honestly really cool to see that. Like, they never redeemed Silco. No, which was good. Again, there's too many villains that become like, like they stick around like become antiheroes. Silco was, Silco started evil, he stopped evil, and in the middle he was evil. I but he but he but like he genuinely like loved Jinx and like cared about her. Yeah, all he needed to do to achieve his dream and you know like save Zon, which is like what he wanted to do in the first place, you know, it was trading Jinx. His last words are, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean he, he's he's full of holes. What's lying gonna get him, you yeah. know? <laughs> That's the thing, when you take villains and you make them do all these heinous things without remorse, but then you give them one person they genuinely care about more than all of that. 
it really does humanize them in a way that you don't even want them to, but it's interesting. Exactly. It's like you still you still hate them, but yeah. you enjoy hating them so much more because they're not they're not one dimensional like twirling their mustache. They're they're a human being with like a human spread of emotions yeah. and actions. I love the relationship, not because I think it's good. Oh, it's very unhealthy. It's so interestingly toxic. You know, it's an animated show. I feel like you, I feel like you, you know better than I do. But I feel like a lot of times they have a more of a habit of you know, your characters become more like starkly mm -hmm. like there's there's good and bad. It's a lot of main characters don't have like more a lot of morally gray characters here and there, but they're not nearly as common. And this again, everybody's got like a little bit going on that doesn't just make them characters. They're human. So moving into the second part of the show, episodes four through six. The middle trilogy. The middle trilogy, which I think is where, you know, it gets a little, it gets, it speeds up. Things are happening. Yeah, no, the, 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 the like, every, like, the stakes get higher, you know, the politics increase, like, the, the champions were in the show, look like they are in the game. Like, like, Jinx has the ridiculously long braids, Kate has, like, sort of around the age she is, and she's, she's getting into, like, the big goofy hats. <laughs> I don't like that hat. <laughs> So yeah, the time skip was, I thought it was pretty seamless, I'm sure you did. Was, I like they didn't say, like, you know, X amount of years later. They just show, like, you see, like, you know, Jace is clearly older, he's got, like, a five o'clock shadow. You know, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Tech and Piltover has, like, evolved so much. We don't need to know how many years it's been. We can tell that, you know, like, Jinx went from, you know, what he looks like a six-year-old to, like, you know, a adultish person. Jace went from, like, a young college student to, like, a prominent figure in in Piltover. Yeah. You know, Vi is a is a grizzled prison badass, you know? <laughs> During this whole section, I was so interested by Jace's story because I, oh. it was so fascinating to watch how he went from someone who they were all being so pissy at. They realized what value he had to them and then suddenly he's their knight in shining armor. You don't understand what's at stake, but how can you? And, you know, the, the reference, like, Piltover was established as, like, technology and, like, no magic because of, like, what happened in the Rune Wars, just the, the, like, the wanton destruction of unchecked wild magic. So the fact that Jace came in and said, no, we can use this, but do it our way, and it works, and it skyrockets Piltover to, you know, a global player. He goes from expelled to, you know, Piltover's hero, the poster boy. His whole arc, too, is, like, I guess it's not as much this part, but you can start to see him let the power get to his head a bit when he oh, brought yeah. out Heimerdinger in the end of it. Yeah, because I think Mel's, Mel's, watching Mel's influence, like, slowly seep in was really interesting. And then, like, which is, she, she's from somewhere else, and then they start confirming she's from Noxus's, like, Might is Right, ever-expanding empire. You know, you can see where it all came from. In the second watch, she was definitely trying to use him, you know, her little puppet. And then oh, yeah. I think it ended up, she was like, oh no, I think he's got some ideas. Were they good ideas? Who's to say? Yeah. But they aligned with hers, I think. And Oh yeah, they, like, she like pushed him like to handle Zahn the way he did. He made that decision. She didn't force him into uh, that. She led him there. Oh yeah. She led the horse, but that horse drank willingly. Um, so then I wanted to move into Powder versus Jinx. It's one of my favorite things with like, like it's, it's a reason, not an excuse. Yes. You know, it's, she's got like heavy, like abandonment issues. And that grows into, like, you know, we mix that with, mix that with a little bit of trauma and existing in Zon, being, you know, mostly raised by a drug kingpin. Then, like, when, when Vi, after Vi hits her, it's like, or, like, when she realizes what she's done, like, that breakdown is, again, another, you see the jinx start to come out. Yeah. So, in our notes, I did write this as setting up the larger plot, each perspective getting its own major theme. But what I really want to know is, mm -hmm. do you agree that Mel, Jace, and Victor are a thruple that function in a way where Jace is at the center? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god as, as much as as much as i would love for jace to be smashing his political compatriot and also is 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 a uh, his little victorian scientist um it's <laughs> I don't, like jokes aside though like i like i love their relationship it's like so like it's the, the brotherly aspect of it and then like the mirrors of like them saving each other between episode episode two and episode nine mm. Am I interrupting? Am I interrupting? It, it was satisfying. It was equally satisfying both times, but it, it's the payoff of it coming back yeah. was wild. I, I loved it. It just shows how intertwined they are, despite how, like, what different walks of life they came from. Exactly. They're, you know, they grew up polar opposites, and they shared a dream, and then, you know, when Jace gets pulled into politics, he wants Victor's dream, but he's, like, straying away from it. And while Victor's, like, starting to delve down this, like, mad scientist path, I think they're both, like, self-aware I mean, Jace isn't fully aware of exactly what's going on with Victor, but 
like like at the end of the show, Victor's like, yeah, we we lost our dream, you know, in the pursuit of greatness, we, we forgot, forgot to do good. good. In the pursuit of great, we failed to do good. Even like we've talked about before, how the fact that it's science with magic means that you can do a lot with that for different people. Yeah, beyond anything. Yeah. It's... So Jace is going to that route of how can I use this from like to leverage my political like standing, whereas Victor's thinking, how can I use this to live? Yeah, yeah, he's trying to he's trying to save his life. Yeah. Like he ends up like getting, like oh the hex works with like it responds to you know organic stuff, and then his blood actually gets in there and you know bang a bang a bongo he's sprinting on metal leg. Oh God. Episode three had pretty much the bulk of the fight in the Oh yeah, that, 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 yeah, the ending fight was like the was like yeah. Peace there is a stance. <laughs> but episodes four through six, it's getting in. My personal favorite, Savika versus um Vi part one. Yeah. And oh, part two. But. Dude, dude, the part was like I love that like the reverse elbow joint. Which is so just like just like the zoom and she's like, you thought and just boom. <laughs> It was so cool. Because, like, even though I know I'm supposed to be rooting for Vi in those, I love Savika so much. She's such a badass character. That arm is so cool. Also, I think, like, I liked it better almost in that version. Like, before it was modded as much. Yeah, I agree. Which is, like, the, the, the modded version's, like, super cool. I, I liked the, the, the energy waves. The sword coming out of the knuckles is rad as hell. But... I don't know, just, like, the, the simplicity to the first one where it, like, runs all... It's, like, you see, like, the, the shimmer piston, and then it's just, like... Again, I cannot stand the reverse elbow joint grab enough. Like, some shows, like, the animation, like, you lose some, like, detail in the fights. They did not drop the ball for a second. No. And it, I, it like, even... Because they, they do blend. Like, we've talked about music, we've talked about art, and we've talked about fighting, but all of them blend together so Yeah, perfectly. oh, I feel like every, every fight has, like, a very good song behind it, and, like... That the punches land when the song punches, and the song is always punching. They're always punching. Like, Overall, then were there any specific parts that you found interesting? Like the end of episode six. Oh, that's at the end of episode six. The, the firelights come. We have no idea who he's gonna be. Which maybe maybe I kind of knew he was Echo, but that's just because like I don't they, they, like they never I established that part of Echo. Who never exactly. It's like you know they're they're lingering on this like leader of this gang, and it's like it's probably someone we've seen already. You start taking the check boxes, it's like. Where's where's little man? But, it's, but, but like the scene before when like Jinx lights the like the smoke thing. Oh yeah. And Vi's, I that was, oh my the spiral like the, the camera spiral around like everything was in like it's like just as she loses hope because at that point there's still like a lot of powder left I think. Yeah. But they like once she like meets Kate that's when like Jinx really like becomes like the forefront of the personality. Yeah, that really is the catalyst. Because I think you're right. Like, until then, she still had yeah. hope. Like, when she sees Vi, she's like, I changed. Like, she seems, like, very open about communicating about everything. Right. Because it's, it's the abandonment, like, you know, coming full force. Like, she's, you know, I hadn't seen Vi in years. All of a sudden, Vi is back and is, you know, going around with somebody else. And it's like, she's, you know, Jinx feels like she's been replaced. You know, Kate, like, stole Vi from her. Yeah. And that just, yeah, it's the, you know, straw that broke the camel's back. And, you know, she's, it, it kicks out, it, it steps the pa- Jinx stuff up to like a whole like a, a whole next level we've been ignoring it but actually one of my favorite relationships in the show is savika and jinx they hate each other but then savika will still give advice to silko about how to parent her it's so fascinating how she works right because they, they're again they're like polar you know jinx is like you know you know you know crazy like you know loose cannon does what she wants and savika is very much like you know right hand man you know always like you know you know, Silco's at the top of the food chain, but Savika's like running the day to day of this business. And you're know, the guy, the guy, the Ching the guy, guy with the gold. Yeah, Ching guy. <laughs> wild, wild little I love man. That guy. You're you're calling the shots here, clearly. But that's the thing. You know, Silco's like, I don't know what to do, and you know, she hates Jinx. She would prefer if Jinx was out of the picture, but she knows it's it's her job. It's going to make things flow if she helps Silco fix the Jinx problem. Yeah. And keep him happy because when he's freaking out about Jinx, he can't do his job properly. She's like, yeah, I hate Jinx, but I care about Silco more. Yeah, the show definitely does have, like, a great balance of characters who use logic and characters who use low motion. And that, I think that is interesting, because Jinx is very much emotion-driven. And Savika's 100% logic-driven. That is, I just love their little it's comparison. Good. So then going into parts 7 and 9, getting towards the end of this, because it is amazing how much they fit in fucking 9 episodes. Oh my god. But this is, yeah, the political elements of the show are just... They're at their top now. Things are, like, they went from being, like, mild spicy to, like, really spicy. Yeah, this thing's jacked up. Oh, my God. Because, again, like, the, the politics in, in Arcane are never really, they're never going to affect the game of League. No. Like, it might affect, like, you know, some characters, they might, like, update character backstories for what happens in Arcane. But, you know, it's, it makes Arcane its own 
Like, it, it helps, it needs to, because Arcane needs to stand alone to be a quality show. It can't be like Marvel where, oh, you need to, like, consume all this other media for this to make sense. And the fact that they can have such, like, deep political intrigue and, you know, keep you invested in this world without necessarily caring about the game the characters are from is, I think, important for keeping it, the, like, it would have been a good show, yeah. but it, it was a great show because this, the drama makes it its own real breathing world. Instead of something that was just, like, yoinked out of a game and put into a, a nine-episode animation. That is interesting, because I feel like a lot of people, when there's a verge, like, a interpretation of something they like and it's different, they get upset. It seems that you like that it is different. I love it, yeah, because, like, any media that's based from a video game, a lot of times either try to go to, like, by the line of the game, or just kind of stay loose and go, like, totally different and, like, lose, like, what they're connected to. Yeah. And both of those never work. League hit that balance where it's like, yeah, we're we're pulling the characters, we're like hitting the big notes, like we're only talking about things that are like, you know, like Piltover and Zon have been established for years, not like, you know, creating new cities for the show or like changing major things about the cities for the show. You know, it's it's staying true to the source material while becoming its own thing totally separate, standing alone from what it comes from. Like characters' voice lines in the game, you know. Like, the personalities match up to what's going on in the show for the most part. But I do feel like we freeze over a bit Marcus, because I found his story to be very interesting. Like He's, like, stuck. You know, I think he tried to... Because that's one thing they don't, like... That was very much, like, a show-don't-tell. Is, you know, once, um, you know, Vander and the... I can never remember the sheriff lady's name. I can never... But, like, <laughs> like I think he tried to do, like, establish what her and Vander had with Silco. I think that, that was a conflict. He's like, all right, I'm trying to do the right thing. I, he, he wanted to, like, keep moving forward what she was doing, but Silco wasn't allowing for that. He, he, he's, you know, all of a sudden was, like, in over his head, and he's got to, he keeps, he, you can watch the whole time, he wants to pull away from Silco, but Silco is not letting it happen. He's rolling up to his house and, like, vaguely and then very much directly threatening his, like, his young daughter. Oh, my gosh, that was creepy. Oh, that was so menacing. Ugh. That's, like, Silco's oh such a baddie. Scary villain in a very, very good way. Seeing a show that was, like, featuring children for, like, the, mo like, the first three episodes, mm -hmm. Having a story about, like, how oftentimes, like, these kingpins do have relationships with the police. Like, this is, like, a connection. This isn't, like, one versus exactly. the other. It's working together. Yeah, you're, you're watching you're, you're watching children get exposed to, like, mature experiences. When when um, Echo sees, finds out that Vander's working with the sheriff, mm -hmm. you know, he's, yeah, he's watching this, like, morally gray. These, like, you know, this, like, under, under the table relationship. And you can see, for the kids, it doesn't click. I saw everything. Be so. Like, my favorite scene in the show is absolutely, like, the, um, I think we talked about it before, Echo, Echo charges Jinx on the bridge. Yes! And you see, like, he, like, you see, like, it's, it's super stylized, and then, because like, you watch it, like, go down, like, slow motion stylized, and then you see it play out real time. Like, time reference is, I don't want to spoil where he's going, yeah. but, like, you know, he, he's working on the clock, he's got the, the, the pocket watch in the episode four when we're doing the raid, he's, like, you know, timing it down. Yeah! The last scene with Heimerdinger, you're, like, you're watching a clock go while they're talking about stuff. Talking about, like, because, okay, the last episode, too, holy shit, with Oh, my Jinx God. Putting them at a dinner party. Dude, that was, that, like, that's, that's a hurt or scariest. Like, with the just so menacing. Oh, my God, with, um, she brings my own clogger. Yeah, it's like, clogger. oh, my clogger. <laughs> <laughs> my boy clogger. It's like, so you want me to be powder or you want me to be Jinx? And it's like, yo. Like, it's like the tension, like, the tension is so high because you don't know, you, no. you don't know what Jinx is going to do. That's like. I love shows where even if they don't do something drastic, they make me believe that they would have. And when she brought that plate for a second, I was like, did she murder and decapitate Caitlyn? Right? It's like, in my head, I was like, I, I, even on the rewatch, I mean, obviously the rewatch I knew, but, you know, even that, like, you know they're not going to, like, kill off, like, Kate so graphically. Because, like, she's a main character, she's in the game, but at the same time, it's so believable that, you know, Jinx could, like, pull yeah. it up and have it be Kate's head. You, like, you can feel, like, the visceral fear that Vi's feeling. Yeah. And then Jinx is like, I'm not that, that's ridiculous. It's like... Kill Silco, but, like, obviously regretted doing it immediately, like... Yeah, it was like that fear response, like, she's getting screamed at from both sides, she doesn't know what to do. I think she is legitimately, like, her yeah. asking, it wasn't a rhetorical question, she, she, she didn't know. Powder or Jinx. She was, she was on the precipice. And, yeah, they're both yelling back and forth. She, you know, freaks out and, you know, shoots Silco. And I think that, like, that locks it down. That last, like, self-destructive act is like, well, That's this it. is it. I'm, yeah. I'm, she basically says, like, I'm out. Silco dying, I think, really capped off his villain arc well. Again, I would have loved to see more things go on in season two. 
but at the same time, it I can't things all very neatly. Like Jinx kills him, and you know his last words are, you know, I would never, I would never have sold you off. He's capped off so well, and also like I think in if he was around in season two, he'd be doing just more of what he was doing in season one, which is still great. But we've seen it, and there's like more, there's more places to go, there's more growth to be had. You know, I think it's it, it's it's good that they killed him when yeah. they did not like extend his storyline artificially. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Sometimes the storylines can drag, and you start to dislike the things you liked. And I'm glad they exactly. stopped the whole Silka yeah. thing because I was enjoying it. You know who we never talked about? Because she's in my death notes. Sky, like Victor, you know, ignores yeah. her for the classic, you know, like genius scientist. You know, ig- ignores the cute girl because he's like, I have to science. Yes. And then you know she tries to make the move, and instead of you know just getting rejected, she gets you know. She she walks in on this like nightmare and gets turned to dust and is like oh sky, oh sky. Felt bad, but so I, I just wanted to make sure she got brought up because the, yeah, the dusting no. was hefty. And he's this little tiny whiny he's at this like lowest point. I'm <laughs> reading this like love letter from her and it's like oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, people are going. I mean, obviously it ends with the missile like cracking the glass in the council. Like I don't know, all I, I'm, some councils are gonna die. There's I don't think there's a way where they you know kill J C in two episode one. But Mel's not, like, anybody who's not Jace is not safe. Because that's what the thing is. I want Mel to be safe because I find her character so fucking interesting. But she was right next to that fucking window, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like, there's, there's absolutely no telling who's going to live out of that. Jace has brokered a peace with Silco in exchange for the Undercity's independence. So I think that's such an interesting thing because usually people have that mindset of, it's never too late. But realistically, in the real world, sometimes it can be. Right. It's it and like you almost see something that's like similar, but in like the opposite direction in episode three, where you know they were gonna get out. Clagger busted. The, I said it right that time. Oh my god, no, you're so right. That does mean you're not. You're so smart. Yeah, it's like, you, you bust the hole in the wall. And it's all good, and then but then Jinx blows it up. And same thing. They were about to like separate Zon. You know, Silco's dream was you know things were gonna happen. They voted on it. And then as soon as they say it, it's you know again, Jinx blows it up. You are so smart. But then you have to close it out. Thank you for, first of all, your time doing this video. You're welcome. And then also thank you for suggesting the series. Yeah. I, I've been hyping it to everybody. Yeah. And, like, it's very much in your wheelhouse. I was like, Shannon needs this. But overall, thank you. And did of you course. have any closing thoughts as a leak, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to call it. I'm sorry. <laughs> very quick on your feet there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was really cool. Because I remember, like, when they first announced, like, yeah, we're doing a show. Hearing, like, the leaks coming out and then, like, Seeing it actually happen and being done so well was huge. You know, if they confirmed the second season when, like, the day before, like, the third set of episodes released. So, you know, we've been, I've been, you know, looking forward to this for years now. And then, literally, like, a couple weeks ago, like, I think, like, started November, they dropped a, they dropped a tweet with, like, a five-second teaser of, like, you know, it's just, like, all, like, red and black and Jinx, like, walking down the bridge and, you know, season two, November 2024. So now that we're, like, on, now that we've got a timer ticking, it's just, like... Oh, a year, though. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's worth the wait. It is. If it means, like, we get the same kind of quality that we got for season one, like, animation, writing, yeah. and everything. Time cannot pass fast enough. That's how I feel about the Spider-Verse movies, too, because they're kind of, I feel like they're related a lot. Like they're oh, yeah, they're very, yeah, yeah, it's, again, like, similar style, like, unique ways of animating. Um, just, like, the ridiculous high quality, um, the, the complex characters... And that, like, I, it's working better. Exactly. They, they care about their source material, and they're, like, respecting the, they're respecting the project by giving the time it needs. Yes. And because it started out so high quality is how they can, you know, get the leverage to, like, yeah, we're going to take three years after season one to make season two. And it's good. I'm sure it'll be worth it. Oh, my God. It's going to be great.